and welcome to the first episode, or instalment if you will, of the Thoughtful Knitter video journal. My name's Ailey and I'm coming to you from the very far north of Scotland. I've been knitting for a good number of years but um, this is my first foray into making videos about it. So um, I'll just give you a wee bit of background as to why but there is a separate really short video on my channel already introducing my intentions for these videos. Um, so I, like I said, have been knitting for a good lot of years and only discovered the wider knitting community in 2018 when I stumbled across, um, I think it was an audio podcast to start with and then Ravelry, <gasps> how, I, how I managed without Ravelry before, goodness knows. And then I started watching video podcasts. So um, I've been enjoying them for a lot of years. Didn't ever really think I would make one of my own. But I've recently found, um, I'm recording this for a bit of context. Um, I'm recording this as the world, or certainly in Scotland, as we emerge from the COVID pandemic, we're kind of at the get your jab and get on with it stage. Um, so things are opening back up and I'm not able to get out and about the way that other folk are and I'm really, really missing speaking about my knitting. So I decided that I'm just going to speak to myself on my phone, make some videos and if it's only me that watches it in the future, that's fine. I'm aware that there are thousands and thousands of knitting podcasts out there so I'm really not expecting anybody to follow along. Um, but in the off chance that someone stumbles across the videos and um, wants to watch, then I'm hoping to make them as accessible as possible to anyone who um, struggles with uh, energy levels or concentration um, for whatever reason. So I'm going to have them in short segments um, with divides so that you can come back another time if you've only got you know, time or headspace for a 10 minutes or so. So without further ado, um, I will get into the segments. The first one being um, what I'm wearing. Um, this knit here um, has a lovely yoke. I'm trying to get a bit closer. Um, it's a lovely lace yoke. And it's quite an unusual construction. This is called the Lorelei, Lorelei, I think. Um, the designer is Amanita. I'll put details below if I can figure out how to do that because she has a name that I can't pronounce and I don't want to embarrass myself and her by saying it wrong. But if you were to search Amanita, you would get her designs. Um, I really, really enjoy this jumper. Um, it's a really nice weight. I can wear it in the summer um, because it's Scotland and it doesn't get that hot in the far north. And I can wear it in the winter with like maybe a, a um, cardigan over the top. Um, it's like I said, it's quite an unusual construction. So you actually knit this section here and that way. So it's like knitting around like that and you join it together and then you pick up stitches and knit up the way and pick up stitches and knit down the way. So I'm going to stand up so you can see it properly, maybe go back a wee bit and um, give you an idea. So it's kind of mid hip length, a few quarter length sleeves. Um, there is some shaping. So it's a really wearable jumper. Um, I, like I say, it was knit in 2019. Um, so it is wearing really well. I don't have any baubles or pilling that I can see at all. Um, and I knit it in ew, Eden Cottage Yarns, Melbourne four ply which is a blend of 85% Blue Faced Leicester and 
15% silk and it is a super wash yarn. Um, so that's probably why it's it's wearing pretty well. Um, and also with it being blue faced Leicester rather than merino. It's really soft. Um, and yeah, so that's what I'm wearing. Um, I haven't seen that many um, projects of it, so it's maybe a different one for you to see. Um, it's definitely one of my favourites. So um, yeah, let's go on to recently finished objects. So, um, most of the things I have recently finished are waiting to have in sewn in because I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one who finds sewing in, blocking, anything that isn't just knit in, abhorrent. Um, so the first finished object that I have is in such a state. It is the Croft House hat by Ella Gordon. Uh, I don't know if you can see it very well, it's not the best light. Um, this is knit in the original colourway for the Jameson and Smith um, yarns. This was one, I think it was a 2017 um, Shetland Wool Week pattern. Um, and for some reason I recently just took a gi that I absolutely had to knit it. Um, I think I was having a bit of a wanted to knit ferial. I go through phases of what I want to knit. So um ordered the wool, got the wool, started knitting, realised quite quickly that it was a bit big. Um, I did change my needle size a little bit, I went up a bit, but I generally have to do that because I'm a tight knitter. Um, but I kind of feel like it could do with a repeat or two coming out. Um, I'll show you. I, I think it's enormous. Like it's it's very roomy. Um, I mean it's not too bad but um, I was planning on giving it to my sister-in-law for her Christmas because my brother has a croft, hence the croft hoosies. Um, but my mum came in um, just as I had finished this and had it sitting like that, you know, just flung because I was really annoyed about it being too big and was trying to decide whether I was going to pull it all back out and start again. Um, and she said, oh, what a lovely hat. Um, and I said, yeah, it's a bit big. I was planning to give it to my sister-in-law, um, but I'm, I'm going to have to pull it back. And she was, said, well, oh, well, maybe it's, it's not too big for me. Um, and I says, oh, well, try it on. So she really likes it. She quite likes the kind of tam look rather than a um, beanie. So she, she kind of wears it like this. So she has claimed it, um, which is great, but I still have all of these to weave in. And it still needs to be blocked. Um, at the moment, it kind of looks a little bit like it's got a nipple on the top. Um, but yeah, I hope you can see the colours. The colours are just divine. This is a, I just absolutely adore this. Um, and yeah, I suppose I better show you my folds since everybody does that. Um, here you go. Have a wee, a wee flash of the, flash of the um, floats. Hopefully they're okay. I think I'm improving at um, small knitting in a small circumference um, when it's the that body of the piece that's easy because it's on uh, 16 inch needles and you just knit round and round and round but when it gets to the smaller bit um, I don't get on with DPNs at all double pointed needles um, so I use magic loop um, and I am getting better at managing my folds around that. Um, I saw a really good um, video last year for Shetland Will Week. There um, were some, they went online because of obviously with COVID everything got cancelled. 
um, and there were some free videos from the Shetland Amenities Trust channel um, and a couple of which were by Elizabeth Johnson and she did a really good one on, um, I think it was for Fair Isle Mitts and it was kind of describing how to um, transfer the last three stitches of each needle onto the next one to stop you kind of pulling your floats too tight or too loose um, as you transition. So um, yeah, so that's that's the only one I've got in my hand at the moment and isn't completely finished. Um, I also recently finished, I've been doing a lot of gift knits, um, so I recently finished um, a pattern by Liz Cork called Lubach. I've got no idea how you pronounce it, it's Gaelic, Scottish Gaelic. I don't speak Scottish Gaelic, um, that's very much a West Coast thing. Um, more is the shame, but that's the case. And I pop a, a picture in, I'll put, pop a picture in here. Um, I knit them using West Yorkshire Spinner's Signature 4 ply in a self stripe bin called Seascape. Um, which is lots of beautiful blues and greens and um, the kind of colours that are right up her street. Um, so you'll you'll be able to see in the picture what kind of um, design they are. Um, Liz does a lot of lovely um, accessories. I came across her doing a test knit last year for her um, and she works a lot of twisted rib um, which is beautiful and thankfully in the round you just have to work through the back loop of the knit stitches rather than the knit and the purl stitches so it's not as much of a nightmare as you might think. Um, but the Lubach mitts um, have, they're nice and plain, they've got the kind of, um, what's that bit called, like, well the cuff and the finger tips and thumb tip, they're twisted rib and then the rest is stock and stitch with a lovely cable that moves around the hand. Um, you can probably see it better um, in other people's projects because I used a self stripe bin, um, but I, I like the effect so, um, and my sister in law loved it too, so that's great. Um, the other gift knit that I recently finished was for my good friend Verona, who lives up in Unst in Shetland. Um, she's not originally from there, but she's married a local. Um, and I decided that every Shetland, Shetland lass should have a Shetland lace shawl. Um, but I don't think she's much of a shawl wearer, so I went for um, a pattern that seemed a bit more modern. It's no. not the same as the traditional Shetland shawls. Um, it's called the Herman Ace shawl, so that also drew me to it because that's really close to where my friend lives. Um, which is right up the very north of Unst, um, and Unst being the most northerly Shetland island. Um, so it's, you know, next step North Pole kind of thing. Um, so it's it's beautiful. It was um, knit on four millimetre needles with really, really fine yarn. It was called lace weight, but I would say it's more a cobweb um, weight because it was... 100 grams gave you 1200 meters, um, which to me is thinner than normal lace weight, but I don't know, it's the first time I've used anything so fine, so I'm sure there's people who know better than me. Um, so I knit it, um, I'll put a picture in as well, um, I knit that one in Craft House Magic, um, she's got a podcast, Ellie. Um, Craft House Magic Merino Lace in the colour we a crazy little thing called Love. And it's a really, really lovely colour. It's um, like a, a neutral with little kind of spots of rust, a yellow and, um, no, more yellow and um, purpley, kind of pinky purpley. Um, so it's lovely and um, she very much liked it. So. Um, it was beautiful when it was blocked, it just grew and grew and grew um, and it was quite hard to part with because it was just such a lovely thing to hold but I did kind of think I'm glad I'm not 
wearing this because it would be ripped and torn and pulled within minutes. I'll get it stuck to the Velcro on my coat or something. So um, yeah, my poor friend should probably not want to wear it. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's my most recent finished objects. So I'll just quickly um, go on to show you my works in progress at the moment because it's getting dark outside. It's only 20 to 7 but we're getting very close to the equinox so it's going to get darker and darker. But hey ho, um, spring will come again. So my current whip made me laugh a bit um, because I was knitting on it and then recently this this new couch got delivered. It's like a little snuggle seat, two-seater couch seat thing. Um, and I realised that I, this colour and my wallpaper are the same as this. So yes, that's quite funny. I've been um, feeling these colours obviously um, and they, this is kind of made from leftovers. This is the Roth the Marcus Cowell by Mika John and it was written for this collection of patterns here. The Perspectives collection um, was put together by Julie Rutter of Black Isle Yarns um, to showcase her yarn Aachen which is um, a really lovely woolen spun yarn. It's, it's a sport weight and it's a mixture of Blueface Leicester, Shetland and Cheviot. And I absolutely love this yarn. Um, so the blue here, this kind of bluey green tealy colour, um, it never shows properly on camera. But there we go. Um, that's leftovers from a previous project. Um, I knitted a, a tank top from the same book um, earlier in the year. So that was some leftovers. And then I had also bought um, another colourway called Seaweed. Um, so I thought they looked really nice together. And then, like I say, discovered I'll, I must think this a lot because I ordered this um, couch and it's basically the same colour. So, um, that is going strong. I'm not going to have enough yarn. So, um, I think I might be at the stage where I'm just going to give up on this section. That's actually inside out. I always knit inside out. I find it easier, um, the position. Okay, so that's the way it is. And then So there is a stocking stitch bit at the end here in the main colour and you're meant to knit 27 inches but it's not going to happen, I don't have enough yarn. So um, I might just give up the most here, possibly do another inch and then there's going to be a section of stocking stitch in the contrast colour. Um, and then you swap over. Um, so I'll, you'll, I'll put a picture in of the final pattern so you, you know what I'm talking about. But at that point I'm going to switch over to this yarn. Which is Marina Skua Mendip. Oh, I shouldn't be putting that over my face. Um, so this is Marina Skua Mendip 4 ply. In the colourway Stormy. Is it? No. It's on the Storm base. It's on the colourway Night. On the Stormy base. Um, so I'm going to swap over when this runs out. When this one runs out, I'm going to swap over to this one and have it as a background colour. There's people walking past my window wondering who I'm speaking to. Um, so that's that's one that I'm knitting. Um, 
the other main project that I have on the go is a gift knit, so I can't show you at the moment. But I also have this one in kind of hibernation. I haven't done anything on it for ages. Um, and this is the mitered corner. I think it's called, yeah, Mitered Corner Blanket by Pearl Soho. Um, and there's a podcaster called Ina, who has a podcast called Ina Knits. Um, and I just, I only discovered her in, I think it was December or November time last year. She does a really lovely um, series of videos each t that time of year um, on Huga. Um, she's based over in Norway. So um, I've been watching her and I think it was round about, it was maybe just after Christmas she was sharing her mitered square blanket and she had done this like really nice um, edging. I thought, oh, that that's lovely. Um, so I just kind of followed what she said and, and started. She's since um, released a tutorial on how to do it. So if anyone's interested, but it just really kind of puts it all together a lot nicer. So I worked on this quite a bit early on in the year and then haven't bothered since then. Um, I, I'm just using up leftovers, it's the whole reason that I started. I've never done a scrappy project before and my leftovers were getting out of hand and um, I hate having things left over. I want everything to be finished and get the most out of it, of out of my will. Um, so this I'm using up. I'm kind of making it about R N D K weight. So anything that isn't R N or D K, if it's a four ply fingering weight, I'm holding it double to get the right gauge. Um, and the only real um, rule I have is that I'm doing trying to do a solid then a, either a variegated or a tonal um, and mix them up that way. So this has not seen any work in ages and I started off quite good sewing in my ends and haven't bothered since ages. So this is going to be a very 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 long term project that will probably last about five years. Um, but yeah, at some point, probably in the winter, when things are a bit colder and I want a bit of coziness and a nice blanket over my knee, I'll probably get back to it then. So yeah, those are my works in progress at the moment. I have lots of ideas stewing um, about what to cast on next, but I just... The eagle-eyed amongst you might have realised that um, I have recorded these segments over two days. Um, that was because I was losing light and it's, it's a lot better now. So um, I'm just going to carry on with the final segment, which is um, kind of future plans. Um, probably like most knitters, I have them coming out of my ears. I have far too much wool in my stash and a few, a good few projects lined up, um, most of which are not calling to me at the moment. So um, what I'm going to share instead is the two, three that are highest on my list at the moment. The first one that's calling to me, I've been um, trying really hard to work my way through stash and not just keep buying and buying and buying for the pretty next thing. So, I have had this lovely one. In stash for easily over two years. Um, it is Eden Cottage Yarns Boland four ply, which is a fingering weight for anyone who isn't in UK. Um, and it is in the colourway Starlin. So it's a lovely, like a grey with speckles of like yellow and rust. 
it smells very sheepy. Mm. And I have swatched so many things with this and never come across what I actually want to do with it. Um, but I will insert a photo here of the latest idea I've had, which is the Corey, yeah, the Corey Cardigan by Natasha Hornby. Um, and it's just, it's a lovely shape, um, quite simple. It looks like it's going to be a good fit. Um, I've found that quite often raglan type cardigans don't really sit very well. They kind of slip off your shoulders. Um, so I'm quite taken with this one. The only thing is it's in garter stitch, which is going to eat up the yarn. And I would really like it to be slightly longer than what the pattern shows. So I'm thinking I might knit it in either stocking stitch or reverse stocking stitch, um, which should give me some extra meterage without affecting the shape, I hope. But that's going to take some brain power to work out. So um, that's why it's not on my needles yet. The other one, brand new shiny thing, um, Hoki Locatelli's newest jumper. I think it's called Newsprint or something. I've already bought it. Um, but I have these yarns that I got on a D stash from Katie Green of the Green Bean podcast. Um, and these are, I think they're discontinued colours um, of the Blacker Breeds. So it's Jacob's. Um, I've knit something in Jacob's before and really, really enjoyed it. It's, it's really hard wearing and still quite soft. So I'm thinking this really, really dark bluey black, which is called dark blue basalt, um, for the kind of black colour that she has in original. And then instead of um, mixing it with white, I also have a gradient, um, a green gradient on their different bases. Um, so I have two of each of these. And they are, this one is pale green clay. The slightly darker one is pale green marl stone. And the darker one again is pale green granite. So I think they might be quite nice held together with this. So yes, that's another one that is tickling my fancy at the moment. So we will see. Um, I will report back if I make another video. I will make another video because even if it's just for me. Um, so yes, thank you for watching. Um, if you like what you've seen, do give me a wee thumbs up. And um, if you want to come back, then press the subscribe button. Um, sounds a bit weird asking you to do that but um, anyway that's how you'll find more videos if you like them and um, there's also the description box which is down here and um, so I'm gonna link any kind of makers podcasters that sort of thing that I've mentioned there and um, I'll hopefully see you again at some point in the future thanks for watching bye